All right, everybody, let's get started. Welcome to the Just In Mind version 8.5 release webinar. I'm Danielle Schneider, and I'll be taking you through all the new features that we've added in this new version of Just In Mind. So just a quick overview of the things that we're going to be going over today. So in these new features in Just In Mind, we've added the ability to bulk edit widgets. Just click on edit all widgets when you're in the edit mode for a library and all widgets will load in separate tabs for editing. And you can save all those changes in one click. Next, we'll show you how you can find and replace styles. So you can edit all or a few properties of widgets that you have or anything really on the screen uh, just using a new tab in the edit menu. And that applies as well for those widgets that you might be editing in bulk. Next thing we've added is the ability for developers or those in development mode in Just In Mind to view comments and requirements in read-only mode. So those developers can keep up to date with the designers and those who are creating the prototype. And the result of these three that I've mentioned so far is now the ability to optimize your design system, keep that design consistency, and make quick changes across your prototype that are reflected to all of your different stakeholders. And just as a bonus, we've improved simulation in Just In Mind. While this applies to all types of, of prototypes during simulation, this is especially effective and improved for those of you who are using responsive prototypes or responsive widgets in your prototypes. And as always, we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So if there's anything you would like some clarification on, we will be happy to answer that. And if you have any other questions that aren't related to this new release or anything else you would like to talk about, go to our community forum at justinmind.com community. You can ask a question there. Or if you have a subscription with us, you can go over to our uh, customer support portal, ask a question there, and we'll get back to you right away. All right, so let's get started with showing you guys some of these new features. So I'll start with throwing a couple of situations or scenarios that you might have encountered as a designer or a developer. And how especially with these new features that we've added, we're working to help you prototype faster and more effectively and avoid tedious actions like changing font or font size for a lot of different widgets over and over again. So here's the first use case that we, we're going to throw at you. Maybe you're working with your team and you made a design change. Maybe you want to use a different font or a different font style, but you have hundreds of screens, many, many different text widgets in your prototype, and that is going to take a long time to change one by one. We've made that a lot simpler now. You can go to Edit, Replace Styles. All right, and you'll see this menu here where you can select a number of different properties to change. In this case, we're gonna change the font family and style. We're gonna change it from Arial. And just to show you guys how this is going, we can find, and there are 33 possible matches in just this canvas. And that is just one screen. So we're gonna change this to Open Sans. And we can change this on just this one screen, or we can change it on the entire prototype. All these, these, uh, all of these screens that we have here, and that is 249 matches. But right now, we're just going to change it on this one uh, screen. So we're going to place all, okay? And with just that click, we have changed all of these. These, this text to Open Sans rather than Arial. But we can keep going because in this situation we have made some design changes. So we're gonna change the font color from, let's see, I think it's this one. And we're gonna place replace it with that. All right, 29 possible matches, replace all, boom. All right, just those couple clicks, we have made those changes and we are optimizing our uh, design system. No longer need to make any tedious and long changes 
over and over again. Here's another scenario for you. Say that we are creating a design system for our company and we're gonna change a, a basic type of design. We're gonna start with a basic type of design like bootstrap or foundation, uh, just as an example, and we're gonna change it to fit our own branding and style. So what we're gonna do is go to replace styles. We are going to find background color. And I believe this is the background color of many of the widgets on this screen. We are going to replace it with maybe a purple. Maybe that's our favorite color, our branding color in this company. All right, 10 possible matches. We're gonna replace all. Okay. And there we go. And just to show you guys how this can operate at a much larger scale and how this can really help you avoid a lot of tedious work, what we can do is we're, we have our own custom widget library that we have already loaded into this prototype. There are many different widget libraries that you can download. Just go to widgets, download libraries, and you can see a number of those that we've already created. And of course, you can import any libraries that you have created on your own. So we'll go to edit library. Now we are in edit mode. We're going to go to edit all widgets. And that is going to load up every single widget that we have in here. And let's see how many is that. It's a good amount of widgets. Let's see, maybe like 40, 50 around here. Okay. So what we're going to do now is replace styles again. And we're going to change the background color for every single one of these. Let's see how many are there in the entire prototype and open widgets. Okay, 39. All right, we're going to replace them all with that purple. All right, that's it. So when you're creating that design system for your company, this can be an easy way to get all of the elements you have in your prototype synced with that design and avoid all of those changes that you might have to make one by one. So you can use your time more efficiently and wisely. All right, let's show you guys our last example here. This is actually this screen. And this is another use case or scenario you guys might have run into. Say that we have a base design or, or a list or type of screen that we like to use as a base for clients and other kinds of basic prototypes that we like to change and send out to other people. But we need to change things in this prototype to match the branding of that company. And in this, in this case, this company has a really specific font, uh, font color, font style, background color, all of that that they would like to use. Okay, so what we're gonna go to again is replace styles. We're gonna change the font family and style and I believe this should all be in Arial. Let's see. Okay, 282 matches. We're gonna replace this with Roboto, and let's make it light. Replace all. There we go. Okay, every single text in this has been changed. But let's keep going and further alter this. So we're gonna change the font size. And you can detect this, uh, you can detect one font size rather than any font size. So if, for example, they think that all, or in this case, all uh, size nine is too small, you can change that up, or maybe size 12. In any case, let's go ahead and find all situations of font size 12. Okay, 470 matches, that is a lot. All right, let's change this just a little bit bigger to font size 14 because I like to have things just a little bit more readable. 
Okay, let's replace all. All right. Everything has been changed here. One more thing that we need to do to change this prototype to be in line with the branding is the background color. I think many of the already made widgets in here are this color. So we're gonna change this to red. All right. So now you can go ahead and just send this along to your client or whoever you're working with. So you can have a base design that you would like to use for many different things and customize that design in just a few clicks to fit whatever company or, or uh, branding you would like to send this off to or incorporate. All right, so that is just a few of the ways that we have worked to optimize design and efficiency in just in mind in this new version. But I'm going to keep showing you guys some of the other things that we have today. One thing we're going to show you is go back to this screen. And so this is the screen that we changed earlier. This is in this scenario, it is uh, our own team and we made a design change. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave a comment for a developer or for others on their team to note that we made this change. So let's say note change in font style. Make sure to update. Okay, we're going to mark this for developers. Okay, we also have a few requirements in here that we want our developers and other stakeholders to take note of. So we are just going to go ahead and save this. And now we are going to step into the role of a developer. Just quickly here. So we are going to sign out. We are going to save those changes to our widget libraries. Okay. Now we're going to load up just in mind again, and we are going to sign into that developer account. All right, so this is just a example email that we have created. All right, so we are signed into this developer account and we're going to load up our example in a read-only mode. Loading up here. All right, so here is that prototype that we have created already. As we can see, the requirements are available over here just to, not to edit, just to view. All right, you can show those comments over here. Make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so now the developer can note that the font style has changed and they'll need to update all of the documents that they have, all of all of the other things that they might need as a developer to keep that in mind. So the designers and the developers can keep in touch more efficiently, no need to duplicate these processes. You can keep everything available in just in mind and the developers will be on the same page. So everybody is kept in the loop. And just the last thing I want to talk about today is that we have sped up simulation. So I know that many of you, when you're working with a team across the world that might have different or older equipment from you, it might be frustrating that Sometimes everything might be working well for you. Simulation is working great. Everything is working as you, is, as you have designed it. But for them, it might be slow, not working correctly, stuff like that. So we have optimized simulation, so that won't be a problem anymore, so that those of you who have teams all over the place can 
make sure that everything is designed and appearing exactly as you intended. So no more miscommun miscommunication on that end. All right, guys, so that is all that we have to show you guys today. So just a few things that can really optimize and make your design system, uh, updating prototypes, screens, widgets, all of that, make that much more efficient and avoid that tedious work that is really not very fun and not very, uh, not something you want to be doing. So you can avoid that now with replacing styles and loading up all of those widgets in uh, edit mode, saving them all, sending that along to your other team members. All right, guys, so let's uh, get some questions right now. All right, so one question we have here is, how can my developers see these changes, changes to all these widgets, given that they don't have these widgets, they can't load up widgets in their own prototype? So that's a good question. There, so similarly to how we have it uh, shown in a couple of these screens, what you can do is load up all these widgets and drag them onto the screen and write maybe a quick description. So here we have like alert callouts bordered uh, and you can write that description so your developer can see all of those changes that you've added. All right, uh, let's see. What are a few of the ways that I can share my prototype with my developer? So what you can do, there are, there are a few ways that you can do this. Uh, if your developer really wants to be more hands-on with a prototype, really get more within the Adjusted Mind interface, you can add them as a developer for free in your online account. Just go to the Collaborators tab and you can, change, you can add them as a developer. Then they'll get an email to join Just in Mind, download the application, and sign in. And once they're signed in, they will load up to this. And uh, once they select on an element, they'll see all of these uh, really helpful descriptors and parameters that can assist with the development process. Another way that you can communicate your, with your developers or share your prototypes is exporting to HTML. And that will generate a folder uh, that includes all of the the uh, the parts of your prototype that you need to simulate. And once they get that folder, they can open the HTML and they will view a simulated version of that prototype. And the last way, or rather another way to share your prototype with your developer is to just go ahead and share it to your online account. You could invite them as a reviewer or you can send them the public URL and uh, send that to them and they will be able to view that prototype. And another way is to work on shared prototypes. So when you use teamwork, you can work on different prototypes or view them at the same time and they can view the live the live changes to that prototype by going to update all, showing history or closing it. So in that way you can stay really up to date with your developers or your developers can stay really up to date with what you're doing. All right, not too many questions today, guys. That's fine. I hope that means that everything was clear for you. But if there's anything that you would like to ask that might not have to do with this webinar, maybe some other general questions about Just In Mind. I'll point you again to go to our community forum at justinmind.com slash community and ask your question there and we'll get back to you right away. Or if you have a subscription with us, you can go to our customer support portal and ask a question there. And we will also get back to you there right away in a more uh, private or confidential way, uh, given that it is not open to the public. All right, guys, thank you so much for attending today. Hope this was helpful for you, and I will see you guys in the next one.